In this video, we're going to be looking at what an inscribed angle is as well as what an intercepted arc is. And once we know what these two things are, we're going to be looking at some theorems that have to do with them both. All right, so an inscribed angle has a vertex on the circle and the sides of that angle are chords. So right here, we have an inscribed angle because again, the angle is on the circle and it is made up of two chords. All right, so now that we know what an inscribed angle is, we can look at the intercepted arc. So here in blue, I'm tracing out the intercepted arc that is related to that inscribed angle. So an intercepted arc has endpoints, so we have endpoints here and here, has endpoints on the side of an inscribed angles and angle and lies in the interior of the inscribed angle. So I could say that um, this arc is intercepted by the inscribed angle here. So let's give it some names, actually. Let's say this is Q, R, S. I could say that my arc, R, S, is intercepted by the angle R, Q, S. All right, great. Now that we know what they are, let's start looking at some theorems. The first theorem that we're going to look at is called the inscribed angle theorem. And that theorem gives you an idea of the relationship between the inscribed angle and its intercepted arc. So let's draw an inscribed angle here. So we have an inscribed angle and we have its intercepted arc out here. And remember that that intercepted arc is the measure of the angle going from the center. So that right here gives you the measure of the intercepted arc. So the inscribed angle is always going to be half the measure of the inscribed angle. It's always going to be half the measure of the intercepted arc. So let's say this is A, B, C then the angle, the measure of angle A, B, C will be a half of the measure of the intercepted arc A, C. All right, and that's a given. So we can say it that way, or we can say that uh, the measure of the arc A, C, oops, that's the arc there, is always going to be twice the measure of the intercepted angle ABC. So these two things are the same thing, just saying it in two different ways. All right, and that's our inscribed angle theorem. So we can use that to do a couple of things. Let's look at an example. Okay, so here's an example at the bottom right of the page. And in this example, I've given you the measure of this intercepted arc, and we know that the angle, the inscribed angle, has to be half that. So we already know automatically that this is going to be half of 70. So this angle 1 is equal to 35 degrees. The measure of angle 1 is equal to 35 degrees. All right. And in the other side of the circle, I've given you the inscribed angle, and I've asked for the measure of the intercepted arc. And we know that the intercepted arc is twice the measure of the inscribed angle, which means that angle Two, sorry, the measure of arc 2. Uh, so I'm just going to say measure of 2 is equal to 56 times 2, which gives us 112. And both of these are in degrees. For the rest of this video, our theorems will be specific to inscribed polygons. So let's make sure you understand what an inscribed polygon is. So if I have a circle, and do this off to the side. If I have a circle, and then inside I have a triangle, and the triangle, every vertex touches the circle, then my triangle is said to be inscribed. If it were not this way, if only two or one or no vertex vertices were touching the circle, then it would be not inscribed. No, 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 yes, yes, yes. So that's what it means to be an inscribed polygon. Um, it's the same for a quadrilateral or a pentagon or any figure that's inscribed in a circle. Every vertex would have to touch 
the circle. So that is an inscribed rectangle or an inscribed quadrilateral. All right, so now that you know that, let's go ahead and talk about the angle of an inscribed triangle theorem. Okay, so here we have a diameter. And of course, with a diameter, of course, comes a semicircle. So if we have a diameter or a semicircle, uh, then we create a triangle with an inscribed angle here. So remember that inscribed angle has to touch the circle. That inscribed angle has to be 90 degrees. That makes sense, and I'll tell you why. Or intercepted arc here is 180 degrees. And remember that that vertex, that inscribed angle, has to be half of or intercepted arc. So it makes sense that this would then, of course, be 90. So that's like a mini, teeny tiny proof there. All right, so that is our theorem. I'll read it to you again so you know what it says. An inscribed angle of a triangle, so that's this guy right here, intercepts a diameter or a semicircle. So it intercepts this diameter at a right angle. All right, cool. So now we can use this information and solve a problem. Let's do an example. Okay, so in this example, we have a circle and we have an inscribed triangle and the angle here, the inscribed angle, is intercepted by that diameter. So we know then that this angle has to be 90 degrees. All right, and if this angle is 90 degrees and we know that the sum of the angles of a triangle is equal to 180, that means that when you add this and this, it has to have a sum of 90 because we already have 90, so there is 90 more degrees in our triangle. So in order to figure out what x is, our equation would be 4x plus 2 plus... 9x minus 3 will give us 90. And now we can go ahead and simplify that. 4x plus 9x is 13x. We have 2 minus 3, so that's minus 1, is equal to 90. So I can go ahead and add 1 to both sides, and we get that 13x is equal to 91. All right, finally, we can divide both sides by 13, and we get that x is equal to 7. All right, let's move on to our final inscribed angle theorem. Our final theorem tells us that if we have a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle, the opposite angles are always, always supplementary, which means that, for example, if this here was 70 degrees, then opposite that, um, so these two angles have to be supplementary. They have to add up to 180 degrees, therefore this angle here would be 110, and now they add up to 180. Uh, similarly, if this angle here was 80 degrees, then this one would have to be of course, supplementary to 80, which means it would have to be 100 degrees, and now they are supplementary. So this is the case for any type of quadrilateral. It doesn't matter what type. There are several types. It doesn't matter what type. Um, as long as it's a four-sided figure and it's inscribed in a circle, this is always going to be the case. All right, that's it for now.